I've been somewhat of a subpar, second-rate rip-off of the Nostalgia Critic for a while now. And while it's been fun for me, nobody's really been watching this show. So, I've decided to ditch all the Nostalgia Critic-esque plot rundown and supposed jokes that aren't actually funny and go straight to talking about a movie that I love. And I've decided to start this new direction with the 2001 animated blockbuster, Shrek. This film flips the classic fairy tale narrative on its head by telling the tale from the ogre's point of view. And this works spectacularly, making $484 million at the box office and spawning three sequels and several spin-offs. So let's get straight down to it. Why do I love this movie? Well, let's start with the characters, because it has some very interesting characters. The original casting of Chris Farley, who sadly died before production could be finished, and Janine Garofalo, could have made this a wildly different movie. But I'm not here to speculate on the weather twos and why fours, the ifs, the buts, and all the rest of it. I'm here to talk about the cast that we did get. Namely, Mike Myers, Cameron Diaz, Eddie Murphy, and of course, John Lithgow as Lord Farquaad. Of course, Myers recorded most of his dialogue without the lilting brogue we're used to in his original sessions. It was only after the movie was into production that Shrek gained his Scottish roots. It was Myers' drawing of memories of his mother's fairy tale telling voice that led to the most unconventional of heroes having an unconventional sound to him as well. Interesting trivia aside though, I like the characters in this movie because they're damn funny and play off each other really well. Shrek and Donkey are an epic bromance for our time and Princess Fiona is no sort of wilting wallflower lost in the distance when the real action begins. She's out there in the thick of it, an all-action, skull-cracking, butt-kicking princess, inspiring a new generation of little girls to do... things. And Lord Farquaad, for that matter. He's a villain, sure, and he behaves like an absolute Farquaad, if you know what I mean, but that's because John Lithgow plays the part brilliantly. He's just got that voice. But I'd be giving the movie short shrift if I didn't mention the wealth of minor or side characters. The fairy tale cameos, if you will. The fairy tale characters of old, your antagonistic wolves, your gingerbread men, your three little pigs, who are inexplicably German here, are mostly voiced by the animators themselves with a few exceptions. Most notably, veteran voice artist Jim Cummings. It's this that makes them so very memorable, as they are portrayed by the people that know them best of all, at least in this instance. Though my English soul chafes heavily at a French Robin Hood. Not cool, guys. Not cool. Let's move on from a French Robin Hood as quickly as possible, and start talking about the genesis of this movie. This is an interesting thing, not least because of the involvement of Jeffrey Katzenberg, who had not long left Disney when setting up the DreamWorks studio. While the idea of a resemblance between then-CEO of Disney Michael Eisner and Shrek's main antagonist Lord Farquaad isn't something I want to get into right now, this upside-down fairy tale does feel somewhat of a two-fingered salute to the classic fairy tales of Disney's lore. The hero is an ugly ogre, his steed is a small, sassy donkey. The princess only gets saved because she thought that was how things went. It seems to go against everything Disney wanted little girls to believe. But the main thing, the thing I really wanted to get to in this video, is how I personally relate to Shrek. Yeah, me. Because I can feel like a big ugly ogre sometimes. I feel like people are watching me, people judge me before they get to know me. And that's never nice. Because I'm weird and clumsy and 
sometimes I can be incredibly unsociable. But like Shrek, I have layers. Like Shrek, I like my privacy. Unlike Shrek, I don't have a sassy donkey sidekick. For example, in the beginning of the film, when all the fairy tale characters descend on Shrek's swamp, and he decides, the hell with this. Myself more than most, being that I do have mild Aspergeric traits. Of course, after knowing Fiona, Shrek's life seems empty. I can't comment on that, because... I've never really been in love. But I do know the transformative power of knowing good people. And of course, in the end, we're shown that what you thought would be your greatest curse would turn out to be your greatest asset. And this is before we even get to Farquaad and his perfectionism. He wants to be king, so he's looking to marry for all the wrong reasons. And I'm sure we all know someone like that, looking for love in all the wrong places. Although he's a great adapter of his plans, when the ogre turned up in the tournament, Farquaad ordered his champions to turn on Shrek. When our hero inevitably beat the human champions, Farquaad offered to return Shrek's swamp in exchange for rescuing Fiona. And as for Fiona, as I mentioned, she is, for the most part of the movie, afflicted to turn ogre by the light of the moon. So every night she feels she has to hide from the others. But then, the ending turns this sentiment on its head, when the curse is lifted, but she doesn't become eternally the princess she thought she'd be. And I'll end this experiment with a quick summary of all the reasons that I like this movie. So yeah, I like this movie. It takes almost everything you know about fairy tales and turns it on its head. And while I might complain that it still ends with a sappy romance, you can't really fault a movie where a donkey and a dragon fall in love, frogs and snakes are used as balloon animals, and our hero turns a medieval tournament into a wrestling match. So that's why I like Shrek. I've been Funky Monkey, and may your god or your iPod go with you. So long, folks. <laughs>